to Hello Nigeria. Now, my producer once said to me that someone told him that a leader never says, let's do, sorry, a leader never says, I'm going to do this or do this. A leader says, let's do this. And who better to speak to us about leadership than Professor Kingsley Mogalu, who is joining us today here on Hello Nigeria. And he is a global leader himself who's made loads of contributions to stability progress and the wealth of nations as well. Uh, he's contributed both to societies and individuals across such domains as academia, economic policy, banking and finance, entrepreneurship, law and more. And he's right here in the studio with us today to speak on leadership and exactly what we need to know. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for us. having me. Thank you. It's great yeah. to have you here. Thank now, you. I think the first question to ask you would be, how do you define leadership? Well, leadership is the art or the ability to envision, to have a vision, to motivate, to inspire society or institutions or families, you know, to progress. That's what leadership does. So you organize for progress by motivating people, by providing guidance. That's what leadership is at its core. Now, there are certain things. It's different from management. Management is the processes of making things happen. But leadership is associated with vision, most importantly. Inspiration, motivation. Yeah. Now, you've been a leader for the longest time. You served yes. as Deputy Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria from 2009 to 2014. Yes. Now, um, first of all, I'll say Happy Democracy Day because we're still in the Democracy oh, yes. Day season. <laughs> Absolutely. And Absolutely. We, we've been looking at Nigeria 19 years down the line. Yes. How would you rate the leadership of Nigeria? Where are we and what are we not doing right? Well, you see, Nigeria today is in a very, very um, uncomfortable place, I would say. And, and the, the future is not very good if we don't change our trajectory. The reason why the future is bleak, unless we change our trajectory, is because we haven't had leaders in this country. We've had a lot of politicians, but very few leaders. And those whom you might want to call leaders are in fact rulers, which is of course a different thing. Like someone asked me, why do you want to rule Nigeria? Because of course you know I'm running for president. And I said, I don't want to rule Nigeria. I want to lead Nigeria because leadership is us working together and someone or some people providing the vision. Rulership is arrogant and it looks down on those who are ruled. That's the situation Nigeria has been in for far too long. And that's why you find a lot of poverty, a lot of unemployment and a lot of instability uh, with yeah. all these herdsmen killings all over the place. Some people who are supposed to be our leaders are not leading. True, very true. Now, you worked for the United Nations for 17 years. Yes. What sort of leadership is it going to take for us to actually achieve the Sustainable Development Goals? Well, first of all, the kind of leadership we need is a leadership that is intellectually capable. When you combine that with a vision, because you have to be able to, if you can't conceptualize it, you can't actually make it practical. People don't understand this. The reason we are poor is because we have people who are supposed to be our leaders, but they are not interested in intellectual things. So things like the Sustainable Development Goals, you have to be able to interrogate them and then apply them using government policy. Absolutely. You know, to make it happen. Uh, but our, the people who are our politicians are interested in different things. They're interested in stealing from the treasury. They're interested in their tribes. They're interested in their religion, hegemony. That's what they consider success. If I were to become president of Nigeria and I were to say um, Nigeria will now be dominated by Igbos, for example, I have failed as a leader. But that's precisely the sort of leadership we have. People who want to dominate everybody based on very <clears throat> narrow views instead of having a world view. When you have a world view, which is what is the secret of successful leadership in developed countries. And a worldview is a mental map of the world and how to navigate your way in the world on behalf of your country. So Nigeria, for example, if I were president, we would have a Nigerian worldview that Nigeria is a country with a destiny. Nigeria is a big, powerful black country. In the next 15, 20 years, Nigeria will be like this or like that. And then we begin to map out how to the things we practically need to do and measure it every year or every three or four years. How far are we making progress towards our national ambition? 
That's what leadership should do for Nigeria. And that's the sort of leadership I'm proposing to bring. We're not uh, in campaign mode yet, sir. Not at all. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> what I wanted to ask is the same, it sounds really colorful, really interesting, but sure. we've heard these stories over and over again. No, you haven't, when, actually. We, we actually have. Whenever no. they come to whenever they come to campaign, you know, they promise a better Nigeria, they promise a, what you a, hear, a Nigeria that is inclusive of... No, let me tell you what you hear. What you hear from Nigeria's politicians is the same old pedestrian pedantic stuff. Oh, I'll build roads here. I will give you a toilet there. You know, that stuff. You don't hear what I'm saying. Nobody, and I put it to you, there is nobody that is running for, le for, 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 the, for political leadership at the level at which I am aspiring to that tells you what I'm telling you. Okay, since we're not starting campaign yet, of now course. let's talk about what we can do differently. We yeah. find that we have lots of leaders now yeah. who are not accountable. Leadership is service, it's accountability. The people Absolutely. employ yeah. the leaders there to serve The people are the boss. But that is not the case. No. We find that our leaders are not accountable. How can we demand accountability for people? More importantly, in a time where we're advocating for people to get their PVCs, how many people have lost interest, really? Yeah. Now let me tell you the secret. When leadership fails, as it has failed in our society, it then becomes the responsibility of the followers, that is the citizens, to now act. So the ball is now in the court of the Nigerian people. You must now take charge and say we will only elect as our leaders people who meet this or that criteria. Character, competence, capability, and track record. So that's now the responsibility of Nigerian citizens. That's number one. They should say to themselves, we must activate our own power as citizens. Where lies that power? In your ability to vote. Because Nigerians are millions, 200 million people. We have a voters register of about 80 million. So think if even if 70 million of these people were to come out vote and vote in the right manner. So mm. first of all, we must get our permanent voters card, our PVC. Then we must vote. Then we must vote carefully. You know, there's PVC1, permanent voters card. Then there's PVC2. Please vote carefully. Mm. Absolutely. But yeah. the thing is, unfortunately, some people are saying that. I've had conversations, as, as a matter of fact, two, three weeks ago with someone in the entertainment industry, an actress, who says there's actually no point, no point getting my PVC because my vote won't count. Now, this is someone who is supposedly enlightened. Oh, then you. how do we get to the grassroots? How do we get to convince them yes. that their votes really count? Yes. Do and their votes through, really through, count? They do. They do. Let me tell you why. Uh, let me prove to you that our votes count. The reason why elections are rigged, and it is scientifically studied and empirically tested, is when there is no very low voter turnout. Yeah. When there is very high voter turnout, it becomes almost impossible to rig the election because the voice of the people expresses itself in so, so strongly in a particular direction. It, even the people who rig know that if they try anything funny, there could be a rebellion. It's when people don't vote. It's when people give up, turn their back and walk away. That means you are selling yourself short. And that's what we need to be telling our people. I am the president of the Institute for Governance and Economic Transformation. And that's a think tank that is helping to develop leadership, democracy, and sustainable, um, inclusive economic growth. And we are running campaigns on why people need to get their voters' cards and vote. It is you, the citizen needs to understand that he or she is the most powerful office in Nigeria. Absolutely. And we need to continue to educate people along these lines. That's yes. what we yeah. have to do. Essentially, that's even what I was going to touch on yes. and state that the highest office in the land is not the office of the president, it's, no. it's the office of the, of the citizen. How do we start, how do we start fueling a conversation that actually tells the Nigerian people yes. that you are the leader in this yes. situation because you are the employer Absolutely. and this is your stance over the next four years given any administration? But we have to talk to Nigerians directly. We have to go to them where they are using the mediums or the media that they consume um, news and views with, and then talking to them face to face, as I do. I go around the whole country in town hall meetings and I'm talking to Nigerians. So we must engage with our citizens because our political class has brutalized our psyche. Yeah. They've brutalized our, our soul and we think they are our masters. 
They don't recognize that we are supposed to be their employers. And we ourselves have begun to believe them. And so, for example, when you say the status quo needs to change, many citizens will say, how? Because they have now developed a belief system that has left them captive to the political class. <clears throat> but if you say to yourself, first, believe that it can be done. Believe that we can change the situation. Then act on your belief. Let me give you an example. There have been many situations such as where we are today in history, globally and nationally. If we take in Nigeria, let us look at colonial, uh, um, colonialism. Nigeria was once a colonial, uh, you know, dependent state. But some people did not accept it. They were educated people, people like Nnamdi Azikiwe, Herbert Macaulay, uh, Bafimi Awolowo, mm -hmm. and so on. So these people did not accept this, and they began to educate. They formed newspapers. They began to educate Nigerian citizens, rouse their consciousness. Eventually, they mobilized support. That support became a point of massive pressure on the colonial masters, and eventually they had to give up and hand over uh, in the, you know, the country to us, the citizens of Nigeria. And this happened all over the world. The same trend is happening globally today, mm. that there is a lot of disruption Political disruption happening around the world. First, you had people like Barack Obama, then Donald Trump, then you had Macron, and you're having it in various countries. Nigeria is not immune from this wave. Therefore, that disruption that is happening all over the world, just like colonialism was ended around the world, that political disruption of the elite, the political elite, will also happen in Nigeria. Absolutely. So the disruption will be beyond the whole Godfatherism that exists of course, in Nigeria? Of course. Godfatherism will end. Okay. Let's keep our hopes alive Absolutely. in that regard. Now, let's talk about something else. Leadership, they say, is done by example. Yes. And we find that when we look at what this, the rule of law is, yeah. according to what David Dice said, it's the supremacy of the law over the rulers and the road. Yes. Now, you're a lawyer yourself. Yes. And oftentimes, people argue that all we see is our leaders find that there's a big fish. You know, yeah. there are people who are immune to the dictates of the law. Okay, yesterday we just had the news of the ex taraba governor who's been jailed for 14 years, yes. which we'll be talking, touching on shortly when we look at trending stories. Mm -hmm. However, there are few cases like that. Too few. How do we move forward? How do we ensure that people at the helm of affairs are leaders accountable to us legally that if they have any issue because we find that some of them are even someone to appear before court before the senate mm -hmm. there's blatant refusal the citizens need to rise up and exercise their civic responsibility to hold their leaders accountable yeah there are many ways to do that you can use the media you can write letters to the national assembly or you can write letters to the president you can hold demonstrations carry placards mobilize million man marches on things that are important to the citizens of this country. Those who are in power or authority cannot fail to notice. They are human beings. If you challenge them, look, you know David and Goliath, people who are in authority always look like they're so powerful. But if we, the Davids, rise up and challenge them and mm. confront them, you will find that they can fall. So we, we underestimate our power, and that's what Nigerians need to get out of. Yeah. So, you know, accountability, for example. So there are two, you can either hold the government accountable by demonstrations or other forms of pressure. And I recommend, as 2019 <clears throat> is coming, you take a more fundamental approach to it. Elect the right kind of leader. The one that you don't have to put under pressure for him or, she, or her to know what is the right thing to do. And for the ones who have done the wrong things, how can we bring them to justice? Because they have pleasure, our commonwealth, yes. and they've put Nigeria, they've really squandered Nigeria things. as well. Exactly. Absolutely. So we find that a lot of them, and they escape yeah. the grasp of the law. Yeah. They escape. Let, let, how do we bring them to justice? It is difficult to bring them to justice if you don't have the right kind of people at the helm. That's why I say we must, as 2019 is approaching, we cannot run away from this conversation. You can say, oh, you're not in campaign mode, you're not, it doesn't matter. This is where the solution is, and that's yeah. where we should be looking at it. The fundamental solution is to elect the right type of people to be president of this country, to be senators, to be governors. That's where you begin. And, and that's most, most times in Nigeria today, you will find that there are a lot of very competent and visionary technocrats who have not been in politics before, but who now, people like myself, are coming in because we're fed up with the system. I am taking my own responsibility as a citizen. Look, I don't have to run for president. I can sit down, I'm a professor, ex-central banker, I can make money in consulting, I can just go around and live a quiet life and enjoy my success. But what does that mean when 
100 million people, 200, you know, 120 million people are living in absolute poverty. Yeah. It means nothing. So as a citizen, I have decided to wake up. I can no longer sit on the sidelines and write lovely articles in the Financial Times of London, as I used to do, and everybody in the world will take notice. That's not enough. That just goes to my own vanity. Mm. I now need to make the sacrifice, which is the sacrifice I'm making, the sacrifice of my time, the sacrifice of my life and limb and security, the sacrifice of my resources. So I'm acting as a citizen of Nigeria who has a vested interest in the well-being of this country. Absolutely. So this is what each and every one of us must do in our own way. We must not all run for office. But some people can organize demonstrations. Some people can organize massive pressures on social media, on issues that are important and that are not being handled well. So, and then most important, we need to get the PVC in 2019, vote for the right kind of people. Nigeria needs a leader yeah. now that will take it into the 21st century. Yes. Because we are so 20th century in this country today. And other parts of the world are leaving us and leaping ahead. Absolutely. So we must solve that problem at the root. And it is who you elect as your president that begins that journey. That person must have a worldview of transformation. That person must have a sense of what leadership truly means. Leadership must come with a sense of sacrifice, abnegation. You know, it's not about you. It's about the people. I read a book called Leaders Eat Last. That's, that's the sense that you must have to be an effective leader. You must love the people. You must want to, you know, transform. We all go to Dubai. We all go to London. We all go to uh, Japan. But you have people in charge of Nigeria today who just go there to keep their money that they have stolen from here. They have no sense. How can I make my country like Dubai? No, they're not interested in that. And when you were speaking on leadership, you mentioned three qualities, actually four, but three head yeah. Cs. That was competence, character, and credibility. Yes. I'd add another one to that and say conscience is very key. But, that comes as character. Yeah, but I say yeah. this because very recently, rather yesterday, the governor of Niger State, it was yeah. said that through media outlets, he stated that he made no promises to his people in 2015, mm. and therefore he doesn't owe anybody anything for that. <laughs> now, what does this say about leadership if you cannot make promises to your people? Well, I think it says something that the capacity for leadership is, is questionable at the least. Yeah, you know, that's what it says. Because you are not a leader if you cannot give the people hope of a better future, especially if you're a public sector kind of leader. You know, leadership is in different um, dimensions. This country has lots of great leaders in the private sector, but their potential is limited, circumscribed by the failure of leadership in the public sector. And that's where our problem is. Now, imagine if this country had great public sector leaders and or combined with the uh, power of our private leadership power of our private sector uh, entrepreneurs, for example. So you find that many people in this country in the private sector have succeeded, but they have not succeeded. They have not succeeded because of leadership in the government. They have succeeded in spite of the absence of leadership. And that tells you how innovative we are as a nation, how dynamic, how vibrant we are as a people. So imagine if you had a president or a governor who fought along the same lines, and then there's synergy between the public sector and the private sector. The wealth of nations will explode in Nigeria. And that's the vision I have. That's my dream. Now, the truth is, not everybody can be president, not everybody sure. will be governor, not everybody will be senate president, you know, or, or be actively involved in politics. Yes. But we can start to teach leadership and inculcate Absolutely. leadership from the smallest units. Absolutely. The family is the indeed family. the smallest unit of the family. Are indeed. you married with kids as well? Yes, I am. So I how can kids. we introduce, how can parents, you yeah. know, family members, how can parents nurture their children and teach them how yeah. to be leaders? How can we inculcate leadership in the families? in our schools, yes. because now we're even pushing for not too young to run, Absolutely. but seeing younger people wanting to be involved in politics. Yes. But the truth is, yeah. they need to be prepared for when the opportunity yeah. comes. Are, so how can we start yeah. from the family, from the home front, from the home to front. the schools, before yeah. we even think of we politics? We tend to think about leadership mostly in terms of politics, but you're right. There's what we call situational leadership. Leadership is the secret of human progress. So in every situation, you will find that there will be a leader who is good and effective, or the lack of leadership, and you will see the result. So, and one of those situations is our family units. That's where it starts. You tell your son or your daughter, you have to be responsible. You have to be accountable. 
That's how you begin. Teach them the notion of responsibility for their actions. Teach them the notion of accountability for their, for their actions as well. And that's where leadership begins. Then you begin to teach them values. This is right and this is wrong. So this is why you should do this and this is why you shouldn't do this. Now, we can use our culture as well to teach leadership. We are a bit hierarchical in this society. So you can say, like I say to my first son, you are the leader. I was the first child of my family and I was five years old. Let me tell you something. I was called Okoli, the headmaster. That's what my siblings used to call me. And I had a cane. My parents gave me delegated authority that if somebody messed up, you could say, give me your hand. Pie, pie, pie. <laughs> and I used it. And up to today, they still call me that nickname. <laughs> so, so, and you know, we're all big and adults now. So this is the whole concept of leadership. Now it translates into my wanting to be president of Nigeria or aspiring to serve my country. But it started inside my family. I was giving direction to my siblings from when I was very young. I had a sense that there was a big weight on my shoulders, that my parents looked up to me in their absence to guide my younger siblings right. So, and so it went down the chain, you know, with age. The older you were, the more responsible you were supposed to be to those who were younger than you are. So, so leadership in the family unit is really, really very important because that's where it radiates out of. Then in schools, the next thing from the family unit, you move into the schools. In the schools, again, the teachers matter. How do they train our children? I believe that two things should be introduced into the curriculum in, in education in Nigeria. Number one is ethics. From primary school to secondary school, our children must learn ethics. Yeah. What's right and what is wrong and why? Then from there, they must be taught what I call a foundational worldview of the Nigerian state. What does it mean to be a Nigerian? That teaches you to be patriotic. What is Nigeria's ambition? You know, and what's your role, <laughs> you, Mr. Kingsley, in achieving that ambition? And when you teach students like that, each person internalizes that vision and they become leaders yeah. wherever they are. Okay. This is how societies are transformed. And that's what I think should be brought into the Nigerian situation. That's great, sir. Now, before we do round up uh, sure. based on time, what do you think about the notion whereby people say that in order to be a leader, you have to be a follower? Well, everybody is a follower at some point. So yes, you must have the humility to be able to be led by others for you to be able to lead. There's a proverb that if you serve the king, yeah. you too will one day be a king. So yes, leadership and followership are intertwined. Nobody is born to be a leader, never follow anybody else, no. At some points in life, you'll be a follower, you'll be led by others, and you should be a good and responsible follower. And as a follower, you're watching the leader, you're learning from the leader, if the leader is doing the right thing. So when you have the opportunity to be a leader, you'll say, I watched Mr. A or Madam B, and this is what I learned. Yeah. So one of my favorite hobbies is just, and growing up, that was always the case, observing great men and women and finding out what made them stand out. And I always felt if I had the opportunity, I'd love to emulate them. You know what they say, um, emulation is the greatest form of flattery. Flattery indeed. Yeah, so, yeah. Indeed yeah, yeah. We're going to let you go now, but very sure. final question. Sure, absolutely. We all have dreams for what we want Nigeria to be. We yes. find that, unfortunately, we're seeing lots of Nigerians run into Canada, run into the United States of Terrible. America, where they're living illegally. But yeah. we want people to, want Nigeria to be the country where people want to run here, yes. even though that's not the case. Yeah. We all have dreams for yeah. Nigeria. And you mentioned that teachers should imbibe in students what the Nigeria of their dreams should be. should be. So my question to you, Mr. King Slimogalu, is yes. what is your dream for Nigeria? My dream for Nigeria is a country that is united, one nation, not a country of tribes. I am Igbo, I'm Hausa, I'm Yoruba. No, it's a country in which the most important identity is the political identity of your citizenship. I am a Nigerian. Everything else comes secondary, you know, ethnic group, religion. Those are sociological realities. I want a Nigeria, and I dream of a Nigeria that prospers. The economy matters greatly. This country has a lot of potential. And I dream of a Nigeria, thirdly, that has its place in the world restored. Okay. This is the biggest country of the black race on earth. Absolutely. Thank Professor so Kingsley Mogalu, thank you so much for welcome. joining us today on yeah. Hello Nigeria. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you thank very much. You.
To enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.